Okay, we're back live here in Silicon Valley in San Jose, California for uh, Hortonworks Hadoop Summit 2012. This is ground zero for big data innovation. All the alpha geeks and tech athletes are here. It's a developer-oriented uh, event where Hortonworks is putting on tons of tracks around data science, business intelligence, analytics, the future of Hadoop, and I'm joined with Jeff Kelly, my co-host, and the CEO of Hortonworks, Rob Bearden. Thanks for coming onto theCUBE, and uh, this is your show. Um, Welcome to theCUBE, and we're thankful to be here, but uh, tell us about uh, why you guys are running the show and what's different about this versus Hadoop Summit, I mean Hadoop World, which is now run by O'Reilly and Strata. Sure, well I think actually a lot of the objectives are the same between the shows, and they're, they're separated by six months, roughly, and uh, a lot happens in the big data world. I mean, it, it almost redefines itself every 90 days, and, um, um, but the objective of this show is um, multifaceted, but, but our, our, our key intent is that this is a show about big data and Hadoop for the community, by the community. And what was very, very important to us during this process was that it actually is not a Hortonworks infomercial. It's a strong value and knowledge transfer uh, within the community. And to do that there, we, we actually designed the whole uh, summit process by bringing in key people from the, and, and high influence people who have different perspectives at different layers in the data stack. Some at the OS layer, some at the DW layer, some at the integration layer, some at the apps layer. And we formed a committee uh, that, was, that was chartered and tasked with defining the objectives of the summit and establishing what the agenda was. So um, I wrote a tweet, I did a tweet yesterday on the news I saw on the BBC around uh, Linux uh, getting, a, uh, Linus getting a, an award for the, uh, for the BBC, and in the quote on the BBC talking about Linux is that trust is everything. And right. uh, in open source, that is a key mandate. You have a background, obviously, you have some history in open source. Mm -hmm. um, your strategy here at Horton versus open source. So talk about trust in this new environment where it's so rapid pace. Uh, right. Unlike Linux, which kind of hobbled along, you had a, a clear leader in Linux. This marketplace is moving at Mach 100. Right. Trust is a key factor, and you guys have a specific strategy around kind of that red hat-like view. So talk about that, just a question. Very, very much so, to, to, to recap the strategy, what's very, very important is that we take uh, Apache Hadoop, which are a series of modules and technologies, and bring those together and, uh, and, and productize and package that so that we can enable Apache Hadoop to be an enterprise viable data platform at scale. And what's, what's vitally important is that, is that we're very, very open and transparent about how we do that from a roadmap standpoint, how we construct the packaging and productization and delivery of that, uh, and how we enable the ecosystem to adopt that. And as part of our core strategy, all the work that we do to make Apache Hadoop easy to use and consume and an enterprise viable data platform at scale, we believe it is vitally important to do all that work 100% as open source in Apache. And then, turn, and then HDP is our distribution that is, again, 100% open source, all Apache. The reason that's important is that we must make the market function. Today, there are multiple distributions with varying degrees of support and compliance toward Apache and open source. In some cases, they are, but there's critical holdbacks that uh, without that functionality, it's really not an enterprise viable platform. That so can talk run about the scale. holdbacks. So I want to drill down on that because there's some nuance in the open source, if you, for the folks not in the open source community. Um, talk, talk about that holdback. So I want to ask you to explain that, what that means, Apache, the donation, and then also the holdbacks. And two, how you guys plan your Horton Dataverse platform, the HDP, how is that different from CDH from Cloudera? Right, so talk well, about the holdback. Both, both and CDH and, and uh, HDP are both uh, working within the Apache Software Foundation. And what we believe is very important for Apache Hadoop to become an enterprise viable data platform is that it must be easy to use and consume. So all the productization and packaging functions that have to happen across any enterprise software, those same principles must exist for uh, within our distribution. Uh, and again, all open source. 
things like monitoring and management and provisioning, all of the, th you know, are, are some of the critical aspects for the operations organizations in an enterprise to be able to, to interoperate and to put uh, Apache Hadoop into production and maintain it at scale. Things like that disaster recovery, uh, data recovery, things like high availability, but all of the th all of those sort of core enterprise functions are the things that we're very very focused on within the community and getting those things back into our distribution through Apache and uh, um, and and with that. It, we believe that, that we then can evolve Apache Hadoop into that enterprise platform that can then uh, be adopted at, in, to the unwashed masses at scale. Right, so what's the, I guess what's the risk of some of, that, some of those, holding back some of the uh, components or some of the, you know, in different distributions, different proprietary uh, components. So w what's the risk there? Is it just simply that uh, it's just not going to be able to reach that scale of adoption? Um, and, and why specifically do you think that? Well, uh, it's, it's risk reward. In some cases, it, it, it may or may not be a risk. What we think is important is a, making Apache, if Apache Hadoop is an enterprise viable platform standalone, it de-risks both for the ecosystem and the enterprise from adopting it. And that they don't, they don't find themselves in a position to where they only get the enterprise functionality if they're paying for it, or they're paying for proprietary potential functionality. Um, and then, they're, then they end up in an awkward position, maybe as they are with Oracle or some of the proprietary platforms. Again, it goes back to philosophical view from our mm -hmm. standpoint that, that if we make it an enterprise viable platform through open source and Apache, it de-risks both for the ecosystem and for the enterprise the adoption and the market can function much faster and at scale. You guys have been pretty transparent about the shortcomings of what Hadoop has and you guys are racing to fill those enterprise ready needs, high availability, et cetera. Um, we talk to a lot of customers who are kind of don't know the whole Hortonworks, Cloudera, sure. open source, but they recognize that it's happening. They just don't know what's going on inside sure. the community. Their version of scale is completely different than what the capabilities are. I mean, obviously batch right now is looking good, but availability near real time is kind of the buzzword everyone's talking about, but you know, on OLTP and other environments, you know, for big banks and big data centers, <laughs> it's sure. not ready for prime time. It, that's pretty well documented. So what are you guys doing? Obviously you're partnering, you're racing to fill the holes. So, right. And talk about that, and then talk about the needs of the, the big players like EMC, like HP, like IBM. They're dealing with their customer base, who right. they're dipping their toe in Hadoop, they're doing some stuff, but they're not moving it into production and mission critical apps. Right. So you've got that balancing act. You're running like the wind to face that product feature hole. You got to fill those holes. Right. Same time, the market wants scale solutions. Exactly. So, so talk about that. And, and scale can come in different varieties, whether it be batch analytics or to, to your earlier point, real time. And what's important is, first of all, we must we must stabilize core Apache Hadoop. And, and ensure it can be viewed as an enterprise viable platform. From there then we can begin to build out for the other uh, use cases and, by, and, and address those use cases through the ecosystem initially by driving, uh, make it very, very clean and easy for those ecosystem providers uh, to integrate and optimize their functionality or service. And, and you do that by creating reference architectures that are deeply engineered together so that so it's transparent to a customer who's trying to enable, for example, real-time analytics to do that with a caching layer and or HBase deeply integrated with um, within uh, Apache Hadoop so you get a closed loop effect of a data flow uh, that, that creates real-world value uh, within, within the use case objective that's there. Can you it, talk about your experiences um, in your past life around how with Linux, for example, you, um, there was the same thing going on where it was evolving really rapidly and then the enterprise at large at scales wanted to adopt it. What was the process? How did, and how does that compare and contrast to Hadoop? Uh, meaning on Linux and how did it sort of cross yeah. the chasm to yeah, use and our... And open source, uh, there's a dynamic here between open source, community oriented software development, and then commercial grade deployments. What, what's, what's vitally important is that as a principle of open source that it reach critical mass from an adoption standpoint. And so to do that, the technology must be relatively at parity and with, with, with other closed source options, or it must be innovative uh, within its own rights and, and solve very fundamental core technical issues. 
but it also must be able to be viewed as having the ability to go to production in terms of stability and viability as a standalone tech, as well as that it, it has a company behind it who has the ability to support it at the same levels of SLAs that proprietary enterprise software vendors do. Yeah. And, and that's what's important. In order for Apache Hadoop to reach that critical mass of adoption, it requires both um, the hardening of the technology and, as well as ecosystem adoption to pull it into the, the reference use cases that the enterprise can see how they gain value back from managing this whole net new data set that they've not had the ability to manage or yeah. derive value from to date. So, so let me just ask another question. So at the end of my post I wrote this morning, let's be clear, infrastructure and platforms are really important right now in big data because it's hard to do. So you have two dynamics going on in this marketplace. One, at the infrastructure level, there's a lot of action going on. You've got virtualization, you've got all kinds all of changing. All the OS guys, HA at the infrastructure it's, level, agree. It's insanely great in a good yeah. way. And right? complex. And complex, but opportunity-wise, it's a right. whole converged infrastructure. We've been covering that like a blanket. So that's hard, there's a lot of action, and that's not you know, off-the-shelf development. It's some real uh, tech involved, and you know, HP and the big guys are cracking that code. So you got to play in that world. On the other side, the end game, so I didn't say, but the end game in the big data market is about analytics mm -hmm. and applications. So well, that's we, how values derived from it, right? Yeah, so you got the, the hard stuff that all the plumbers and the systems guys are working on, and you got the, the real value, which is going to be the disruptive enabler, which is analytics and apps. Right. So Mike Olson talked about this extensively at the Dupe Summit, it's the application market. You know, even Excel has a big data fund around that. So I, the question is for what tools do you guys have in um, HDP around slicing and dicing the data, and how are you guys going to enable the entrepreneurs out there um, to get behind you guys? Right, so a couple of things. What we don't want to do, and it's part of the core strategy, what we do not want to do is beyond the core platform. Our, our mission and role and value to the community is to make Apache Hadoop uh, an enterprise viable data platform. And as part of that, we have to enable the ecosystem to adopt it in mass at scale. The first step of that is we de-risk it from two elements. Number one, we harden it and make it an enterprise viable. Number two, we make it incredibly open and 100% and com uh, compliant within our distro to Apache. So they're de-risked from being painted into a corner with proprietary functionality. But then the third dimension to that is, it's vitally important we have very, very clean open interfaces that they can integrate and optimize their functionality or service, whether it's at the OS layer, the integration layer, the DW, EDW layer, the tools, the apps. It would not be smart for, for Hortonworks, from our, from our view anyway, to try to go have that analytic um, or apps functionality and isolate or disintermediate core parts of the ecosystem. We would much rather make Apache Hadoop a clean platform that they then can take their existing platforms and tools, integrate and optimize, and extend the value to their customers that they create value for today, probably in structured data sets, and easily extend the power of Hadoop to bring in these unstructured or multi-structured or semi-structured data sets and make that transparent to their user because and, and, and extend the value of their existing platforms to now include Hadoop and all these new data sources and make it transparent to their user. It gives them the opportunity to one, create value and candidly remonetize their existing platforms and tool sets. Right? And that's the, that's the, that will then help accelerate the critical mass of adoption, but more importantly, yeah. increase the, the value creation that Hadoop is doing as an extension to the existing platforms and services that are already in yeah, place. Yeah, we see the application as the complete disruption and we think, and in fact, the quote was, you're putting the, the big guys on notice with that approach because the application is where the value is created, as you said. But the question is, that Jeff and I always talk about is, okay, the business model, mm -hmm. is it just services? I mean, come on, tell us, I mean, yeah. it can't just be that. What is on your mind on yeah. the business model? Just 100% open source, and you guys are going to derive extract rents from that by how? By Service. support services. To the Su big guys? Support and to training. To but both to the ecosystem and to the enterprise. So as the ecosystem provider um, integrates and optimizes their platform and they're redistributing HDP, mm -hmm. they're going to want to have uh, and ensure that they have level two, level three support 
so that they can ensure that they're meeting all the, the enterprise SLAs that they're committed to uh, within this new data set that they have to manage for their customer base. And we're seeing great evidence of that already. Um, and then the enterprises, that what they're using Hadoop to transform their business models in many cases. So as you guys, as you guys, obviously that makes a lot of sense, and you guys are well funded, I think, obviously Benchmark, and you have experience with Benchmark, working yes, with those sir. guys, great firm, tier one. Uh, who else is invested in you guys? Index. Index, so you got a lot of cash, you don't have to worry about money in the short term, Correct. and that you can make money off the service. Um, and you guys are going to be transparent about any business model changes Zero. going forward? Absolutely, we are absolutely com committed to that, and, uh, and to be very clear, you know, it is not smart for us to try to go up stack and isolate or disintermediate that ecosystem. In fact, to the contrary, we want to make it incredibly easy for them to integrate and optimize and leverage Hadoop across their platforms. I want to talk about, uh, you mentioned uh, kind of helping customers uh, kind of leverage existing investments in database technology applications, uh, kind of integrating Hadoop into that environment. So what is your relationship? How do you balance working with some of the more somewhat traditional database vendors, the Teradatas, IBMs, others, who uh, on the one hand, you're, you're helping customers to derive more value from those systems that they've invested a lot of money in over the years. Exactly. On the other hand, Hadoop, if it reaches its full potential, could potentially be a disruptor to IBM's business, to Teradata's whole business, to, to Oracle especially. Uh, so how do you balance that, and what is your relationship with some of these larger venue, uh, vendors, uh, database vendors, and, and how do you balance that kind of uh, helping customers today leverage that your technology to drive more value from, from existing investments to, hey, someday we want Hadoop to be the de facto platform and you know, potentially see the, uh, you know, the relational database go the way of uh, the Dodo. Yeah, well, first of all, uh, let me sort of hit that in reverse order if I can, and your, and your points are, are, are uh, well made. I do not ever see Hadoop as a platform disintermediating relational technology, in fact, to the contrary. Um, I just, I, I don't. Each catalog actually is filling that gap right now. It, it, exactly, but, but um, so with that, let me, let me start at the, at the beginning now and go back to the beginning of your question. Um, different platform providers view Hadoop in, uh, in different lights. Mm -hmm. And, but in any case, what we're not here to do is to try to disintermediate Teradata's platform or IBM platforms or the HP platforms. Um, and in fact, what those platforms are doing are they're managing today a much different data source mm -hmm. than the traditional data source that, that Hadoop is managing. Right. Hadoop tends to be managing the, you know, the unstructured and the multi-structured, the machine-generated data, social data, mm -hmm. geospatial data, and, and what, what typically happens is the, the traditional platforms either architecturally or financially, it's not pragmatic to store that volume and or type of structure of data in those platforms. Mm -hmm. And so our goal is to, is to actually work with those platforms to actually have the ability to leverage Hadoop transparently in, in this net new data structure mm -hmm. and extend the investment and value they're creating for their customer to also now include these new data sets and, you know, leveraging Hadoop and the benefit of the bargain of Hadoop mm -hmm. on commodity scale out processing and, and storage capability. So now they can then go to market with the ability at a much more aggressive price point per terabyte of data to, to manage and, and combine sort of apples and oranges of data structures mm -hmm. and, and to create transparent value very, very rapidly for their customer base. And that increases, when the, when the value they create for their customer increases, their opportunity to monetize also increases. Mm -hmm. And so it actually, if, if, if we do our job correctly, we give them the ability to bring Hadoop into their customer base, it actually makes them more defensible yeah. with their customer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, not that I'm going to point out anything that's not obvious to everyone in the analyst community, but when you, you guys are really disrupting existing tools. So what I found interesting was the VMware relationship the high availability of pre-existing <coughs> virtualization. And VMware did this, by the way, the server vendors, if mm -hmm. you look back at what they did. So that's really good for you guys, because you're taking a market that already exists, you're not trying to reinvent. So you're making the market on the Hadoop side, which is great, I get that. Now you've got to come in and deal with pre-existing technologies. Mm -hmm. um, how do you walk that line? Because you're disrupting that market. Well actually what we want to do is, is leverage the stability of that market. And so why go create brand new HA services 
you know, within the stack, it, it, it's better and cleaner to actually leverage the HA services at the, at the VM layer and as well as at the OS layer. And what you'll see is us uh, very, very uh, quickly come back and announce um, deep reference architectures and integrations leveraging the, the OS layer services uh, for Windows and uh, Linux environments at the OS layer. So the other thing that markets are made by lower cost solutions that deliver value. So we've been following the data warehouse business of Telsworth, and there's an old school there talking about that, right? So like, the old school <laughs> guys. The long you know, the EM, yeah. And EMC and these guys, they're making a ton of cash on these solutions, and the customers have huge investments. Right. But in comes Hadoop, in comes HBase, you got Mongo. You can actually do filers and stuff very low cost. Um, so that's super disruptive. So again, that's again another disruption. How how's your conversations in those, in the customer base and with the vendors you're trying to do partnerships with? Uh, talk about the partnership vendors first, like uh, the big the big data warehouse. Hi, I'm Rob. I'm here to disrupt your business. Work with me, <laughs> or you'll die. I mean, yeah. tell us what how that, how does that go? Well. It, 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 Differently, in, in some cases really well, and in some cases horribly. Um, and uh, for example, so let me give you just a couple of examples. Teradata, they really get it. They understand the importance of the, that the enterprise places on bringing in all this other uh, data sources and types. And they realize that, that, that it is architecturally and financially not pragmatic to do it within their existing platforms. And they had the, and, and, uh, it's a natural extension of the Aster platform to leverage Hadoop, as well as a natural value creation to take Teradata Classic and also extend for the support of Hadoop and bring both data types together transparently. They absolutely get that. They are aggressively engineering at the lowest levels of integration points, uh, HDP and both Teradata and Aster with some very, very high value solutions. Do you see, do you see these guys thinking along the line, and the old expression goes, cannibalize your own before someone else does it, or eat your own before someone else does. So obviously with lower cost value, the shift of value will always go to something else. So if you're a big IT player like Microsoft that's obviously partnering with you guys, and they're eating their own dog food with Azure, and you know, they're going down that path because I think they see the IT wave a little right. bit differently. Right, so how does, what do you, what's your view on that? I mean, do you agree with that? Do you think the big guys should start shifting their value? Well what they see is, the, well, let me tell you what I believe they see, I can't speak for any of them, but, but my, our observations mm -hmm. is that this is a whole, what, what you really have to make sure that, that philosophically you view and believe is that this is a whole net new data set and a data type that today predominantly is not managed by any of the platforms today. And this data set and type, according to IDC numbers and Forrester numbers, is going to be in the next two to three years, anywhere from 50 to 80% of the, of, the, of the total addressable data in the enterprise will be in this unmanaged, multi-structured or, or uh, no-structured data sets today. And so they see that as an opportunity, in some cases a threat, but, but more of an opportunity that if they go manage this well and create value around this, not only is it an opportunity for them to extend their value to their customers, it's not monetized today, more importantly, it can add great value to their existing uh, portfolio of products today that, are, that they're already leveraging against structured data sets, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so they see it as a very, very yeah. big net new opportunity. And it's a perfect storm if you think about it. We're just in New York City with Intel around the Open Data Center Alliance, which essentially they're trying to understand the disruption of the data center. And ultimately what I walked away from that show was cloud really isn't happening to the scale that people thought it was because mm -hmm. you know the big investment in data centers server consolidation, all that stuff happened over the past 10 years. They don't, they're kind of already cloud ready and they're not going to move everything into the cloud. Right. So, uh, but big data is a little bit different. It's totally disruptive. So the question is, is that will the cloud really enable more big data? And, and that brings up the skill gap problem. So like right now, and you guys are talking about data science here, it's track, whole track dedicated to data right. scientists. It's just, the tools are difficult. So. And they're very immature. So, so how are you guys looking at that? Also, you want to, pump up the ecosystem and invest in that right. on both the code side, but also on the skill side. So talk right. about your strategy and your, your, sure. just your, your view of like, how do you get more people involved? So what's very, very important, so make sure I address something head on. What's not, what's not smart for us in our view, uh, nor could we do it even if we wanted to, 
uh, is hire enough people fast enough. There's a huge gap in skill set and domain out there, right? But we cannot hire enough people fast enough to create a services business that actually moves the needle for enough enterprises uh, to help in the adoption of Hadoop. Right, the services business has the same challenge, just there aren't that As many. Sean Connolly says, ringing doorbells. I One mean, at a the, time. You're, not, you're right. in the pull business. We're in the, right. yeah, we have to create pull models. So what, what our strategy is, is not to focus on the, profession, the traditional professional services, but more importantly, focus in knowledge transfer, specifically around training. Mm -hmm. So deliver, so go build great content, and we're, we're, we're getting good and we're, we're getting uh, a cadence about that and evolving that, but building great content that we, and then we knowledge transfer to the big SIs so that they can go out and create and, and uh, to their customer base the leverage of, of uh, knowledge transfer to, of Hadoop. So. Uh, I wonder, if we could just back up uh, first, just for a second. You mentioned a tr a kind of transparency to the end user is very important. You mentioned it a few times. So, you know, when we, we've seen over the last year or two a lot of different of the, uh, the MPP data warehousing vendors and others create connectors. So right. you can move data between Hadoop and Vertica or Teradata or, or whoever it might be. Vertica, right. great, great uh, so, but example. From a, from a long-term perspective, is that, is that a viable long-term strategy, having separate systems? And, and talk about the transparency from a te technology point of view. How are you making that, how are you doing that? How are you actually achieving that transparency? Well see, I, I think that's what Hadoop has thrown into question now. Right. right. In, in our session this morning, in the keynotes, that's, what the, what, that's what's happening with the big shift. When enterprises look out 12, 24, 36 months, and they look at what does their data architecture look like? Or what is the volume of data? Where is it coming from? Where can they get value from it? And they're realizing that the vast majority of that data is going to be unstructured. Mm -hmm. And they need to manage that. They need to store it differently, manage it, and process it differently. That they're revisiting what does their enterprise data architecture look like and how is that right. constructed? And how do they move data through a life through an application life cycle mm -hmm. and where does Hadoop fit into that? And it's our job to make sure that Hadoop can be that, that enterprise viable stable platform, but also be very, very open so that the so that it can interoperate with all the other existing technologies, platforms, and solutions and investment that's already in place and allow them to transparently interoperate with that at scale um, and, and get the efficiency back out of that without uh, any threat of going down a proprietary route. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I got to ask you about, obviously, because we're big Cloudera fanboys because they were the only one when we started covering um, uh, Hadoop. You guys are really the second big commercial, I call venture-backed startup that's growing the ecosystem. Obviously you have different approaches. Your quote in the press release, which I commented yesterday, was not dissing the competition, but you're clear about your positioning. How are you, just for the record, just talk about to the folks out there, Hortonworks, Cloudera. There's two different approaches. Why Horton works over Cloudera? Yeah. Well, what we, what, what our job, again, I've been very, very consistent and very transparent and, um, all along, and, and, and we remain committed to making Apache Hadoop an enterprise viable, stable platform, easy to use, easy to consume. Uh, the enterprise functionality, all, all included in our distribution, in open source. 100% uh, Apache compliant, and then very, very focused on ensuring that the ecosystem can interoperate with it and cleanly adopt it. And then our model from an from a economic standpoint is where there's enough value, pay us for support. If there's not, there's no, uh, there's, uh, no encumbrance to you continuing to use the So platform. your strategy is um, all technology development, 100% Apache compatible distribution, right. and then pull support. So the pull comes in from the growth you're banking on the growth of the market to give you that efficiency and profitability. And, we, and our core philosophy is that if we drive enough value into the core platform from a stability uh, standpoint with enough innovation in the, in the functionality yeah. and the technology, that the market will take that and the market will function. And I got to say, fast. Rob, I want to just say for your entire company, I'm really impressed with how you guys handled yourself over the past year when you guys launched a year ago or the company when Eric kind of spun out of Yahoo was kind of quasi ugly and for the folks living in Silicon Valley, there's all this stuff going on in the back rooms around stuff like that and, and the press tried to make it out into a Cloudera versus Hortonworks, kind of a mudslinging match. 
But I got to say, what happened is you guys really kind of you know, kept your cool and high integrity, and also like the market grew around you. So it wasn't about Cloudera Hortonworks. And so mm -hmm. I think ultimately that's the benefit for the community. Um, and you guys did a mm -hmm. good job of kind of not really going there yeah. in that silly conversation. So I want to pay The press and the media love to, 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 and they're uh, incented to do that. Look, uh, Mike and I are, are on a very friendly basis. Uh, we meet often, our teams collaborate, yeah. and, and we're very committed, both yeah. of us, it's been to really, making Apache Hadoop great It's been great fun to platform. watch, and I you know, want to follow my sword, because I was pretty critical at the beginning, like, oh, I don't trust these guys. But you know what, you guys have a ruin in the team, you guys have done a great job, mm -hmm. and and uh, it's clear you guys are doing some great work. What, to, to answer the question though, uh, both Cloudy and I and uh, Hortonworks are very, very committed to making Apache Hadoop the, the center of gravity of the next generation data platform okay. for the enterprise. We're getting the hook, great. so just on the sound bite, on the exit out, I want you to just talk to the crowd about your agenda for the next year, what's your goals. As the CEO of Hortonworks, you got a lot going on within building your own business and that, building that venture up and scaling it, but you got a marketplace that's exploding in demand and not enough supply, so what's Bring your agenda? Bring stability to Apache Hadoop and, and to bring those enterprise data services within Apache Hadoop. Uh, continuing to make sure that, that we are a good steward within the, within the community to innovate the 2.0 line and making sure that, that we're doing the things within the ecosystem that generates a full market and, uh, and is getting Apache Hadoop to drive value for the enterprise with, uh, with the ecosystem and uh, organically. Rob Beard, the CEO of Hortonworks, uh, who's putting on this show, they're investing a lot in this into the ecosystem trust, being a good citizen on top of a highly competitive growing market. Uh, it's fun to watch, fun to be a part of. This is theCUBE, and we're going to actually have another good citizen coming up right after this guest, uh, Doug Cutting, the uh, inventor, founder, co-founder of Hadoop uh, on theCUBE. Again, a CUBE alumni, good to have Doug on, so stay tuned for Doug Cutting right after this short break.